Hi everybody, we're back for our Facebook Live and this is going to be a two-part series. We're going to talk today about the bowl you actually feed your pet in and then next week we're going to talk about what you put in the bowl and give you some different ideas and ways to feed your pet differently so that you can mix things up for your pet, keep them interested, give them some whole food options while also giving them a good nutritious base. And so that will be our next week's Facebook Live. This week we're gonna focus on the bowl you feed them in. And we're gonna first talk about cats. Um, to some degree, I would say and argue that cats are a little bit more um, delicate when coming to feeding than dogs are. One of the things we really recommend for cats is going to be a shallow dish. And so something like this that has just a very slight curve to it, something flat, like the stainless steel bowl or even a ceramic bowl like this one that is nice and flat. Let me tell you why that's important for cats. I once had a cat named Clyde and I fed him in a dish that was about this deep and I didn't understand that when it got down below a certain level Clyde would cry and I thought Clyde was being greedy. I thought Clyde just wanted more food. But in reality, Clyde could not comfortably reach his kibble. So I was feeding him in a bowl like this, but as he would get to a certain level, it would affect his whiskers and it would hurt him. It is something called whisker fatigue. And not a lot of people know about it. I certainly did not know about it when I had cats, but it is a very real problem. And it is something that can be very painful for cats. Their whiskers are very sensitive often let them know when they can fit through certain spaces, through maybe a dog door or through a hole. It lets them know where they can fit. And those nerve endings can be very painful in a bowl that is deep when they're repeatedly hitting it on the side of a bowl. So that is why we recommend feeding them in a dish like this or a flat dish or plate that works quite nicely for them to be able to have access to the food, free access to the food without affecting their whiskers on their face. It also will allow for good portion control. Obesity in cats in our country is rampant, and so this will allow you to give them proper portion control and them not to be able to get too much food uh, on a daily basis. You can also feed them water in these kind of dishes or in a much larger flat dish like this one to again avoid that whisker fatigue. We do recommend for both cats and dogs to only feed in ceramic, or stainless steel, if at all possible. Um, we know that there are some plastic dishes, and we have some plastic um, dishes here for um, special service feeders trying to offer um, games for your pets to slow down their eating. We do know some of those are plastic, however, they are a food grade plastic, but we do recommend being very careful about what you feed your animals in so that it is a non-porous surface and bacteria does not begin to grow on that bowl. As a plastic bowl scratches and develops nicks in it, it gives areas for bacteria to plant and to start to grow and can make your pet sick. It can also rub on their noses and make their, do their nose pink and so that's another thing you want to avoid uh, plastic bowls for. So all of these bowls, you can find lots of different bowls here. We even have these kind of enamel bowls that are also another good option for you that are stainless steel on the outside and enamel on the inside. Raised feeders for big dogs. We do recommend raising your pet's food if you have a larger dog. It makes it a little bit more comfortable, less air intake as they're eating their food. And you can also get a double feeder and put their water in a bowl as well. These are great. We have lots of different heights, lots of different styles available for these. And we have them with both stainless steel, but then we also have ceramic dishes that fit some of these raised feeders as well. So you definitely, if you wanted ceramic, we have the ability to put ceramic in some of our raised feeders. So come in and check those out. One last special bowl that is kind of worth talking about is this bowl, which looks like it's just chalk chalkboard on the outside, but really what it is is a special kind of paint that is painted on the pottery, and when you immerse it in water, it then 
chills the inside of the bowl. So if you're feeding raw or putting canned out for your cat or dog during the day and they maybe don't eat it all in one setting or throughout the morning, this will keep it kind of chilled to keep bacteria from growing on it. It also is great for a warm day. You can put it in the water and keep their water chilled. So that is a really good, unique bowl that you can find here at All Pets Considered. And one last thing to talk about is our Scouts Honor toy and bowl cleaner. Um, this helps cut down on the bacteria on the surfaces of rubber toys and also on bowls. Maybe if you're traveling, don't have the ability to clean the bowl if you're out camping. This is a great product to take with you. It kills bacteria on surface levels. You just wipe it out and it's non-toxic and safe for your pet to eat in that bowl after that. So these are some ways to keep your pet safe and some creative ways to feed your pet to keep them most comfortable. And again, these bowls are very unique. Uh, we did just get them in from one of our trade shows, but we have lots of different options for both your cats and dogs for their bowls. Yes, Merida. And Merida says with all this talking about bowls, she's now hungry and really wants a good snack. Uh, next week, we're going to talk more about how you can mix and match what you feed your pet to give them a good offering of whole foods on a base of kibble. So join us next week on Friday when we talk about that, and we hope to see you soon.